morning from Spain. I um, haven't been doing videos lately on this channel. I'll be honest with you, I'm still recovering from the flu. I actually went to the doctors. Um, I'm on about four different types of medication for congesting and this and that. You know, the funny thing is, if it wasn't private health care, I'm sure they would have just given me a prescription for one thing, but because it's private and I have to pay for it, um, I got four different things, but I can breathe now, yeah, which is nice, because <laughs> I couldn't go through a video um, for too long without coughing up until yesterday, so I'm getting over the flu. Um, it was a bit annoying, because I've got loads of stuff to do, and then you're sort of stuck you can't do anything you can't talk getting fevers nightmare but welcome to the winter um so what's been going on uh well i want to talk about saving for tomorrow now <coughs> there's a cough back um one of the issues i notice with a lot of people especially out of the uk because of the state pension but i get the feeling a lot of that state pension is going to disappear over time um, myself, I don't really rely on it because I'm, although I've paid a lot of money into it, I'm offshore most of the time. So I'm not even sure how much cover I'll get long term, um, but I might just make up the, the missing payments just to get it over the line because there's only about eight years left on it, I think, if that. Because once you've paid a full amount, um, you've made the minimum contribution to get your pension. And that's the, the main thing I'm looking at for that. But I know a lot of people don't have that sort of setup. And I know going forward, um, <coughs> financially, the UK is not in the same state it used to be, um, unless you're a civil servant, um, you know, got a ring fence pension with military, police, NHS, etc., or councils. Um, do you know, that's the funny thing about a lot of that. When people say, oh, they're, they're taking our services away. Does anybody actually look at how much the pensions is? Because a lot of money disappears. Um, to pay for people to retire in their 50s when you're working until you're 60, 70. Um, and then they sit there grumbling that they're having services cut. It's because they take so much out of the pot. That's the reality of it. But anyway... Um, I just want to talk a little bit about little bits of cash because I was talking to somebody, Emma, this week. Emma was looking at moving over to Spain um, and she has some unique talents that she can actually sell on YouTube. Um, and I was just giving her some ideas how to work that because let's face it, if you have specific skills, there is a market on YouTube. It's, I mean, people go, oh, it's oversaturated. It's oversaturated in many things, but not everything. And if you've got specific skills or specific interests um, that are in a niche or you can convey it in a very interesting way or something, there is a market for it. In the same way, if you, you just get a following of, I don't know, um, like Miranda Sings. If you look for Miranda Sings, so that's a prime example because there's two channels, Miranda Sings, then the vlogging channel of the same person when she's not Miranda because Miranda's not a real person. <coughs> but, I mean, her channels, they've got a ridiculous amount of following. Um, but the point being is there is opportunity still there. And I know... People want to move to the Philippines, want to move somewhere else. They want to disconnect themselves from day-to-day, nine-to-five life. And a lot of the time, you can do this with YouTube. You can also do it with writing blogs. You can do it with writing articles for other people and things. But I know myself, I'm, I'm, somebody's asked me to do a video for them uh, this week. And okay, the money's okay. But what they want is very, very specific. And, you know, it's going to take me a couple hours to not only read and understand what they want, but also understand it to the point where I can convey it to somebody else. So there is money out there. There is money out there. And I, I wanted to convey that. And the other thing is relating to making money online with crypto. Um, Somebody was asking me about the cryptocurrencies. I've had a few people ask, and I've been a very 
step offish on it. Um, the reason being is I, it's easy to make money, it's easy to lose money. You've got to understand if you're making money, somebody's losing it elsewhere. So this is why I sort of step back a little bit. Now myself, if I said I bought a some shares two weeks two weeks ago for 60 cents and sold them yesterday for two dollars forty I've had quite a good run with a lot of crypto stuff um, I'm not really going to talk about how much I can make online but it's one of those topics where if you do it right there is plenty of money to make um, some of the guys I talked to that because I'm, I'm in some of the, the groups that deal with the um, trading bots and stuff. They started with like four or five hundred dollars and are sitting on the, I think the lowest one now is one hundred and twenty thousand dollars. Some of them are around four hundred thousand. Um, but it's not all through bots. This is the thing. They see, some people buy bots off them as well, and they think, oh, well, the bots will do it. No, the bots doesn't do it. The bots is a tool. It doesn't trade for you. Uh, it'll do some of the trading for you, but it's not smart. It's not intelligent. It can't read um, market signals and stuff. So bear that in mind. You know, It's not going to do everything for you. you you still got to keep an eye on it. you still got to pick what it's trading. you still got to understand what you're looking for it to do. Um, and I know a few people have already switched off now because they're like, I know nothing about trading. But the whole point with this was it's another revenue stream. And this is one of the things I want to talk about because <coughs> making money online or making money in other ways in your spare time or whatever is not just about um, a pension fund. A pension fund's something that I'm building up myself, but at the same time, there's other ways to look at this. First one is, as I explained the, the last week, was it? My, my van's giving up the ghost. Now, I look out the window, and it's got its MOT in that for the next six months, so I'm not too fussed on it. Uh, but I've just contacted Vauxhall today, and I've contacted um, Toyota to see what they can offer. Because I, I just need a car from A to B. I'm not after anything fancy right now. I'll get something later. Because one of the things I will say about this is if I do buy a brand spanking new car, and one of the things I will say in Spain, I'm going to buy a brand spanking new car, which is something I do not normally do, and I normally would not recommend anybody do it. But the issues that people face here with mechanics, um, I'm going to buy a brand new car. Um, I'm not going to service it. I'm not going to do much with it <coughs> uh, in the sense that no one else is going to touch it for the next five years. The reason being is, and like I had, I had in the UK a while back, I had a, um, a little Renault Clio. Bought it brand spanky new. Had it for about four years. Didn't do anything. Didn't change the oil filter, air filter, nothing. And it's still mechanically sound. And I sold it on later on. I don't want any mechanics touching it. Um, I was talking to Nick earlier. Nick was around earlier because we were talking about uh, something else. But um, he's had a car where it's got to the point the mechanics have done so much damage that the vehicle doesn't run. A friend of ours went to a place in Lazinia, um, the, the boulevard, the big shopping centre. And there's... a place at the back called Noroto which is the um, a mechanic place and she's actually got video footage and stuff um, because they'd done so much damage to the vehicle that half the engine was in the boot of the car and she had to take it to somewhere else to actually fix it that horror story is not unfamiliar to me the mechanic that fixed the van before we put a bit of a instead of buying a grommet put a coke can um, you know, just cut it with a bit of uh, metal cutters and put it in there rather than buying the bung to do it. There is so many things where you're thinking, why didn't you buy that? Why didn't you do this? Why didn't? And a lot of it's laziness. It's pure laziness because the parts centre 
is five minutes from that garage. And I assume the guy is too lazy to just go down there and get it. Because it's not costing him nothing. I buy it. You know, it's my parts. In the same way they even deliver. But instead, cut up a Coke can, overcharge as well. And you end up with a knackered car with parts that are homemade instead of real mechanical parts at a price that is way overcharged. And it seems to be a very big problem here. So for me, I'm actually gonna buy a brand new car. Something I really hate doing because as soon as you drive it off the forecourt, it's devalued. By the way, I'm looking at it right now is, if I buy something second hand, I have no idea what state it's in. Um, if I buy this brand new, I'm not really going to be spending any more money than the car costs over the next five years. So from that point of view, it's worth it. Now, this fits in with what I'm going to say about pension funds and everything else, because like that, um, I can generate extra revenue on YouTube to actually cover the cost of the car. I can generate extra income doing other bits and pieces, so the car becomes free. It, it costs me time but it's not pulling money from my other resources. I just sit there and go, okay, I need to make an extra 200 euros a month, um, but I'll probably be buying the car in cash in all honesty. Um, but I'd still want that money back anyway, so I still, I still try and recover it from myself even. It's like giving a loan to myself um, and then putting that money back somewhere else. <coughs> but this is where YouTube, blogging, uh, finding even stuff locally that you can do uh, to make some extra cash can actually give you a bit more empowerment, bit space to maneuver. Um, I know some people get very limited on their cash flows. Uh, I understand it. I, you know, when I was a student, I was working, but you know, I was thinking even back then, I was thinking, why am I paying so much to the government in taxes? You know, the council tax and all this sort of stuff. Um, because when you started tallying everything up, it was a lot of money, you know, just for living in a, a one-bedroom apartment back then. Um, yeah, I can't remember how much the council tax was, but, you know, the water rates were quite expensive, council tax, and, you know, generally it was expensive living on your own. <coughs> so I do understand when people struggle, you know, at the end of the day, you work all week and you've got 20 pounds left or 40 pounds left a week. So I can understand when you get to that point. This is why I'm very proactive in sort of saying you can do something else. There's always something out there. There's always a little niche. And then you'll find some people that seem to get on a lot in life are always looking for those things. And I know not everybody can do it. But it's um, a bit like a friend of mine who's a mechanic in the UK, and he's a very, very good mechanic. He's worked on every single car I've owned in the UK, and always, I, I know I could trust him. He's rebuilt engines and all sorts for me. Very, very good guy. So he just basically put a garage up the back of his house, because he works at another garage during the day, but at the weekends and the evenings, he would like fix other people's cars, or he will get cars that come into the garage during the day, that had with MOT failure, and then he would weld them up, whatever, and get through the MOT, and nine times out of 10, he would sell the car before he even got back to his house because somebody would be looking for a cheap car because they would often just give him the price of the MOT, which back then was about 40 pounds, I think. Because <coughs> they can't, you can't, you know, car needs 200 pounds worth of repairs, and the, the ticket's 40 quid. They ain't gonna spend the, the money on the car. So he would just go, yeah. I'll give you the 40 quid and I'll take the car off you. And obviously, he can weld, he can fix it. Um, it doesn't cost him a lot to do it because obviously the biggest charge is labour. And obviously, he puts the labour in. And like that, that paid his house off. And he's utilising the skills he's already got. He's not doing YouTubing or anything else. Although, in all honesty, he could do YouTubing on how to repair cars properly because he's a proper mechanic. Um, he, he didn't get a set of spanners off eBay and then started saying, I'm a mechanic. He, he's actually time served and can program your car, etc. Does a lot. Um, but I think that's one of the things people overlook is you already have a lot of skills and a lot of other people will pay for them. 
Because one of the things I do find harder over the years is actually finding people that can actually do what they say they can do. Um, another interesting thing, which I'm not really going to talk about too much, is I may have a job opportunity coming up. Um, um, which is quite unique, but I'll, I'll see how the interview goes first. But I was, I've been headhunted this week, um, but I could be ending up in Sweden, of all places. A bit random, but I'll see how the interview goes. If the interview goes well, well, we'll see how that goes. The other reason I want to do this video as well is I'm thinking about doing more stuff on vlogging, which is more day-to-day -day stuff. Although the, a lot of it ain't gonna be too exciting. Um, just want a bit of feedback if people are interested in seeing what this sort of day-to-day -day stuff. Because I know, um, like Emma was asking, she was asking about enrolling the kids in school. How do you do it? What, how, what's the process and all this sort of stuff. Um, getting medical cards, getting day-to-day -day things done. I can sort of do a lot of that stuff when I'm out and about once I get a new vehicle. But on top of that, you've got the other side of it. I mean, even showing the little fire I've got here, there's been a few people actually interested in buying the fire because it's a little unit, easy to store, easy to take out and, and uh, refuel, unlike the big Caligas size, you know, which are a bit bulky, and then you've got the problem of putting it somewhere in the summer uh, out in Spain. <coughs> Obviously, you don't see the cold too much in the Philippines. Um, but there's a lot of little things. I mean, oh, give my son it. There's these mosquito blinds, which are quite good. I'll mention these now because what they do is they're basically two rectangles. Have I got an example? Uh, need two rectangles just to give you. All right. They're basically they slot together like this, and then you slide them apart where the shutters are on Spanish windows. We, we have these plastic shutters that come down blinds. And basically what they do is you push them across the window, you sort of slide them apart, and it locks into the frame. And then you drop the shutter down, and then you've got a mosquito net there. So if you've got windows without a mosquito net, um, they're ideal, especially with kids. That's why I took the one out of the office and gave it to my son upstairs in the bedroom, because he likes to have his window open. Um, but it, it keeps all the bugs out. Um, that's a typical example of something that people may go, oh, I didn't even realize that existed. But these sort of things I have all the time. There's always little bits. I'm all, especially April, especially kitchen stuff. April in the kitchen's always got gadgets for this, that, and the other. Um, but if you want some more vlogging stuff like that, which is just general stuff, I'll quite happily share them. Um, yeah, I don't know what else to cover lately. Because the thing is, I'm working a lot more at home at the minute because obviously we're just getting over the winter, so I'm not too keen on wandering around outside. Um, weight loss might be a question. Have I been losing weight still? Uh, answer is yes. I'll tell you what, the flu is fantastic for that. Um, my weight's still coming down. And the old vino, I mean, fairly flat-chested at the minute. Um... I've had no wine or anything as well. Although I did, I did do quite well over the Christmas. It was just like the last last week or so, so that dropped off. But over the Christmas, you know, that, is, that was a an interesting thing. That's the first time I can remember that I've actually took two weeks out to do absolutely nothing. Um, and the kids had a great Christmas, and right now. We're in a better position. Okay, we've got a van broken down, but the, once I replace that with a car, um, we're looking at buying a business from somebody in Manila as well. Uh, I keep saying Manila, Madrid, um, but I've got some cash issues with that at the minute, quite simply. I've got some investments that are stuck in the system. Um, yeah, there's a fair bit of money stuck there. Uh, there's about 30,000 euros stuck. Uh, but the point being, these things happen. But as you see, I don't really get stressed about it. It's just a case of when it happens, it happens. And I, I think that's another thing where we were talking about depression and stuff on the last video. 
One of the things I do focus on is the fact is a lot of these things we have zero control over. There's no point getting annoyed about it, getting frustrated, getting agitated, losing sleep over it. Um, you've just got to accept sometimes that life just throws you stuff. And it doesn't matter what you do, you have zero control over it. Um, I know myself, I like to be in charge. I like to control things. I like to do it. But I know myself, there's a lot of things I cannot do. Um, I mean, I've got an interview, like, over the next three weeks. I've got to sit and review all the stuff they've sent over for this Swedish job. Um, but the, the funny thing with that is they're going to call me within the next three weeks, uh, which is quite a... You know, it means I've got to get up to date with all their information, but also they may ambush me because I won't know when they're calling. So it means getting right on on ball with it. But at the same time, if it does work, I'm quite excited about it because when I tell you, if I get it, um, you'll you'll understand why because um, it's quite a quite a big thing for me. Um, but this is this is another thing about this year. 2018 compared to the last two years. This is the first year we've actually been able to function. Because up until this year, obviously it's 2018, we have not been able to do much because of dealing with immigration and things like that. So now I'm in a better position. You know, April and the kids are residents of Spain. We're now sorting April's mother's uh, paperwork out to come to Spain on holiday. Once that's done, I'm going to get April to go over to Spain, uh, over to the Philippines for, for a month or a few weeks. And then when she comes back, I'll go over. The reason I'm doing that now is because if this Swedish thing comes up, I'll be, be in Sweden for a bit. <coughs> but they, ultimately, things are starting to flow. Because up until that point, bureaucracy and hypocrisy um, have dictated what we could do and when we could do it. So we're actually in a better position now than we have been for a long time. Obviously, last year, we lost a couple of people as well uh, in the family. So that was another bad thing for last year. Um, but I suppose that's why we, we sort of spent a fair bit at Christmas this year as a bit of a celebration um, on leaving 20, uh, 2017. <coughs> And looking forward to 2018 for some more positive stuff. So, yeah, so things are starting to start to roll, and we're in a much better position. April's got a little job now as well. She, she's, I mean, she's actually out at a party today um, because she, she's got several Filipino friends here um, from different areas because they. They're all around this area, but they're like within 15, 20 minutes driving. But there's different, you know, they're all over the place. So they're all meeting up for their Christmas party today. Um, so they're all having a Christmas party at one of the girls' houses. <coughs> so um, that's another thing now. April's got her, her friends developing. She's got some good friends here. I've got some good friends here. And it's becoming normal you know it's taken a while to get there in, in in the sense of like being comfortable and that's what i'm saying the problem with the immigration and things like that is it sort of keeps you on edge until you get through all the legislation all the paperwork get rubber stamped in your passports and all that sort of stuff and get your residency cards and then you can say you know what we're now here and this is now us here so I'm quite excited this year because I can see us having more opportunities this year and things starting to evolve. Already, um, like I said, I've been doing quite well with some of the stuff I've been doing online. And it looks like it's going to continue to grow. <coughs> but at the same time, if this Swedish job comes up as well, that'll be another string to the bow. Um, although... I think we'll probably still be living in Spain. It'll be a case of I'll commute to Sweden. Because um, quite simply, the kids are settled here. April's settled here. And I'm not going to uproot and move the entire family again. Um, 
I mean, it, yeah, I've got to admit, I mean, where we're living right now, I, I don't really like it as an area, but I like where we live it, as a community. The, the building we're living is okay, but it's got a nice swimming pool, um, nice te- a good little tennis court near to the supermarkets. Um, but for me, it's a bit too commercial, a bit too... Um, urban for me I li- I'm more I like seeing fields and things and I know April doesn't like that because she's she's read about this stuff relating to um, some of the problems people have had in Spain with, with burglaries and stuff so she wouldn't want to be anywhere outside of this sort of community <coughs> from a security aspect and I can understand that especially if I disappear off to Sweden for a month or two <coughs> So there is certain things where you're sort of like, okay, got to give in somewhere. But then again, I can sit and grumble that um, the location's not perfect, but it's certainly a lot better than a lot of other places. And the sun's back today. Haven't seen him for a while. It's been been away. Clear blue skies again. And I I do know it's raining in the UK uh, speaking to Bob earlier, Bob Bob was telling me it was it's raining outside, and I know May's just come back from the UK as well, and she said they didn't do much when they went over on holiday over the Christmas because it rained so much. Um, I've got to admit, here in Spain, all we've had really is it's been a little bit cold, a little bit windy a couple of days, but it's been fairly nice, and I, I think that's it. I mean, the April's happy, the kids are happy. And for me, that's what's important. From there, I can drive everything else forward. Okay, I'm going to cut this video off because it's a bit long. <coughs> and I know some people go say, ah, oh, you just talk and ramble on sometimes. I know. But one of the things I want to say on this, though, is if you want any more information, please feel free to get in touch. Um, and if, you, if you've got any ideas what you want me to talk about, please put them in the comments below because I think I don't mind talking about most things. Um, would I recommend coming to Spain with the Brexit looming? I'd say, yeah, you know, I, I was living in uh, Germany before um, the EU stuff developed. You know, I know there was the common market, whatever, but um, when I used to, you know, you used to have to show your passports and stuff and it wasn't a big deal then. So I don't think there's going to be that much change. And I know Spain isn't really looking at it in a negative way. It trades a lot with the UK. A lot of fresh produce comes from Spain. Um, it has a lot of holiday makers. Spain, uh, the NHS, has a lot of Spanish medical staff working in the UK. Um, so bilaterally, it benefits both countries. So I would say... It's not really a problem, and it's not. It's not as painful as the UK. You know, at the end of the day, here in Spain, if you were caught with not filling in your paperwork for the last twenty years, you might get a slap on the wrist. The the UK is not so friendly in that sense. Um, a lot of the time, they're not so pushy on it. They're a bit more open, because at the end of the day. You're not getting nothing free anyway. I mean, the healthcare system, you've got to have the S1, and you've got to have the, you know, you've got to be set up in the system. Myself, the family, we're a private healthcare. We have our own income, so we're not, we're not taking anything from the system whatsoever. Um, and that's the thing. If you're not a burden of any sort, then it's not really a problem for most people, what I find. It may take you ages to sort your paperwork out, but at the same time, they're not sitting there using the time against you, which is often happening in the UK with people trying to sort out their immigration status. Um, That's why I find it funny with Americans, Canadians, Australians sort of getting penalised when their connections with the UK are so strong. You know, that's I find it really bizarre. I really do. Because you'll, you'll see somebody who's been married 20 years getting deported because they don't see it as a valid relationship and all this sort of stuff. Um, but I'm not, I'm not going to talk about it too much. Because I'm just saying Spain's a bit more open 
and a bit more lenient. I would say, yeah, would I say more understanding? I would say people are more understanding. They understand the bureaucracy and everything takes ages, and they'll just go, okay, whatever. You know, in the UK, they'll be like, oh, you must have this form. You must have this. And it's like, well, they haven't done it yet. But you must have it before you get, but I haven't done it yet. You know, this sort of thing. Um, so, yeah, some of this stuff is a bit frustrating. But, like I said, Spain doesn't seem to be so aggressive with it. They just sort of leave you alone as long as you're not bothering anybody else. But anyway.